Control system, RCS, back uh, a long time ago. Uh, then CVS, concurrent version systems. Uh, subversion, Mercurial was around at the time, like Get Started as well. And those are kind of the big ones. I'm leaving out a lot of what I consider the, the ones that I don't have any uh, experience with. Um, the visual source saying maybe back in the day. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, maybe the history of tools there. And they've all had varying degrees of usefulness. Um, but Git really really gave you the the, um, the right interface to version control systems, uh, at least in my view. Um, and it, it sort of starts <coughs> at the uh, so the toilet is kind of the best way to put it right. And this is the analogy they use. Now it's probably crude to most. But I would say it's very uh, accurate on the analogy. And the idea is that you can interface with a toilet in many ways, right? Let me get a, let me get a marker here. <laughs> we, we all know how to interface with the basics of the toilet, right? You have your bowl, and you have mostly your lever, right? So, what? <coughs> Everybody knows how to use those basic kind of features. Your everyday features would be your bowl and your lever. Uh, occasionally with the water you know, leaking, and you shut the water valve off or something like that. Um, and what Git, Git calls this, uh, from a command set perspective, when you interface <coughs> the Git command line and the Git commands, is they call it the porcelain. Porcelain's your high level command set, right? Um, if I want to make a commit to my version control history, I'll say git commit, that makes total sense, right? So your, your high level interface is your porcelain. But, uh, by the way, thanks Italy for the awesome toilet. Uh, but there's also other features of the toilet that you'll need when things go wrong, right? When this, you know, when, when you start to get a leak here from your from your supply line, then maybe you want to shut that valve off. Or within the basin, there is a pump. There's the flapper. There's the chain. And these are all the sort of low-level uh, things, the plumbing of the toilet that you'll need to know when things go wrong. And, and Git uh, describes this, or the people that uh, make Git describe this appropriately as uh, plumbing. So you have your high level command set, porcelain, and your low level command set, the plumbing. And, and, and this is actually really, truly is a, a different interface to get. Uh, you can really stay here if you want to, but it'll, it'll take you longer to get everyday tasks done. Whereas something like git commit as a command, which is high level, uh, is will do more for you. But when you 
run into problems the following way up. So that's kind of the interface abstraction of Git. The high level commands and, and low level commands. So maybe I should have started off with this, but the, the sort of goal of what I was trying to do today, or trying to do today, is to um, kind of give you a visual model of the objects of a Git repository and hopefully to give you some structure on how to interpret what's going on in the in the system or in the Git repository. So let's say a good place to start. Um, if we have a if we so what I might do is lay out like a visual map of it and walk through the first commit that you might make to a Git project show you what happens to the different objects and describe what the objects are. And if it's not apparent what they are or I'm not describing it correctly, uh, stop and ask questions at any time. Um, or you have something to add, uh, please jump in. So, uh, and then I'll go in and, and we'll do uh, a little uh, command line action. Kind of the same thing, but now on the computer so you can see how it maps from the visual space to the command line. So, most people are familiar with Git, but if you create a project, let's call it, you know, the <laughs> hackers project, you'll create a directory. Let's call it hackers prj, and you'll run something called a command called uh, git will be the start and then init, and that's just going to create the Git repository within hackers project. It'll be a subdirectory under here, so you'll get dot git here. And you'll start off with basic stuff in this folder. And generally, you don't need to look at it. You can use porcelain and plumbing commands to interact with it. Um, but it can be handy to know what you have in here. So Git repository is mostly an object database. It stores things, objects, in the system. And they go under the objects subdirectory of the dot git. And we'll get into that a bit more later. It also stores references to objects under refs. Um, things like, if you're familiar with tags, branches, um, remotes in Git, uh, remote, they all refer to objects in here. They're all they are are pointers. So you can treat references as pointers. And if you look in the files, you'll see identifiers for the object. <coughs> So you get a .git directory, and there's nothing in there, no objects, you haven't made any change to it. But then, what comes along is, is you want to add a file. You want to create a file. So you create hello.txt. And Git tracks three things with this thing, right? It tracks file name, tracks permissions on that file, Read, write, execute. Uh, I think it's I think it's all of those, and maybe maybe some more. Uh, and then of course the content as well, and that's stored in binary. Uh, Git will store everything for objects as binary. Uh, so it can be tough to open up the file and look at it. It's all binary. So you create a file. Now, if you put the file in Hacker's project, and you have a Git repository. Because of that, you have this thing. Anybody know, what, anybody know what this is? Tree, tree, tree structure. Tree, right? So when you make a file and you have a Git repository, you get something called the working tree. And the working <coughs> tree is the place, for us it's hackers PRJ here. It's <coughs> the place where your files are checked out to and where your local modifications are. So we put file here, hello.txt, and that is now a, a new file in your working tree. Um, the so file system knows about it. So that's just terminology. That's not a Git thing. This is a Git thing. This yep. is Git? Yep. Working tree is a, is working a, tree is a Git, is a Git uh, term. This isn't a, a Git, term. isn't a working directory. Nope. Working tree. You can call it working directory, working tree, it doesn't matter. There's a, a glossary that you can look it up. Well, we can go into it after. Um, you'll notice, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of synonyms that they use in there, and it seems, at least from what I've read, 
that those synonyms, have re they really have meant the same thing. Um, from a file system perspective, like if you are, the working directory is what you're CD'd into, what you've changed into, right? That's your working directory. Um, so they're synonyms uh, for all uh, purposes here. So in order to, so the interesting thing about Git is they have a concept of working tree and there's a concept of objects stored in the system, but you have to purposefully add your file into the system. And that goes through another step. There is a spot in this in Git. I think I might have used the wrong spot for this stuff. I'm gonna move this here. Actually, this is the fun of uh, construction paper. I'll put it in the center and uh, it should work better. There. So the file is added to the working tree. Right? And that could be you touch the file, you've added the content Hello Hackers to it, now it's in your working tree. Uh, and Git knows it's in your working tree. Then there's this thing. Anybody know what this thing is? It's a poorly drawn thing. What do you think it is? Staging. Staging. Right? Mm -hmm. Staging. So, uh, Git has this concept of, here's the things that I would like to commit, right? It's my staging area. You have your working tree, which is your active changes you made on the file system within this directory. And then you have a staging area that are the things you would like to commit. And you could put as much as you want on top of the staging before you commit into your Git repository. Um, Say that one more time. So you can put as many files on, uh, in the staging area and modifications to the files that you have um, into the staging area okay. before you commit that whole set of files okay. as a logical change, a logical um, commit or revision. You commit them all at once or does you it just track? Generally, them? you commit the staging area at, at once as one commit. So here in our instance, we have one file. Uh, so if we committed the state, if we, uh, so what we'll do is there's a process in Git to take a file from the working tree, right? And say, I want to actually get this ready to commit. Let me add it to the staging area. I'm going to add it here. It's actually no longer in my working tree. It is in the file system still, right? Because that's separate. But it's, uh, it's now Git knows it's in the staging area. As soon as you add it into the staging area, now let's jump to the objects here. As soon as you add it to the staging area, Git will make a blob for it. And a blob is an object in this objects directory. Right? Pretty, pretty easy to, to understand there. Um, side note, there's a bunch of characters here. If you've ever worked with Git before, you know that there is a long string of what looks like a hexadecimal string, um, and it is. Every object in here, the objects directory, is a 40 character or 160 bit uh, SHA-1 hash, which is a hashing algorithm, for the content you have for your object. So we created a file called hello.txt. When we staged it, Git created a blob for it. The blob itself contains the binary content of our file. Hello hackers, file name dot text, uh, sorry, hello dot text as the file name, and its permissions. And that's saved in a binary file that's called the blob, identified by this hash. And that, again, that's a 40 character, 160 bit SHA-1 hash um, to identify that. Generally, you can use, um, you can disambiguate, I guess, the object by the first six characters safely. Um, I haven't hit a case where if you refer to it by the six, it tells you there's a ambiguous object by that identifier. So that's pretty safe. All objects as well are um, immutable, right? You can't change your history. You can't change the objects in your um, Git repository. You can, as caveat to that, you can rewrite your history. Um, but 
that is the process of rewriting the history, not changing it really. So I have another question. Yeah. All right, so let's say I create a file. Yeah. And I say git add. Sure. Get add would be a force command. Okay. And okay. put it in the staging command. Right. Yes. Get add adds to staging. Then I continue to edit the file. Yep. And I do git status and it says, yep, it's still in the staging. Yep. When was that blob taken? Like, blob, is the blob represented the binary content of that file when I said add? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this, I, this, this blob is what you've added to the staging the first time you made your change to the file. And the first time you add it. First time you added it. Okay. Yeah. As soon as you add it, you get a blob. Yes. Okay. Uh, and in fact, so we'll jump into it, but git add is porcelain. What actually happens is a command called git update dash index. This is a plumbing command, dash dash add hello dot text. When you do that, it creates the blob, it puts it in the, the index. Um, add, add will We'll do this. I'm not sure what else it would do there. Well, what, so what if he edits it again? If he edits after all that text initially? again? Yeah. If he adds edit. that again, then you have a file has been changed in your working tree. The hello.txt is still, uh, sorry, is still staged here. The original mm -hmm. blob, the original content is still <coughs> staged in git staging area. Um, and you'll see a new file, uh, a new, sorry, not a new file, a new uh, hello.txt has been modified, placed back in, a, in the working tree. So you'll see that difference. You'll see <coughs> the staging area, you'll see hello.txt in staging, and you'll see hello.txt <coughs> as modified <coughs> down here. Right, so you wouldn't see like two, blo two blobs or a blob every time like Right, you wouldn't have a blob because you haven't staged that yeah. modification. If you stage that modification, now uh, you have a new blob for it because it's a new. Uh, there are new. Uh, there's new content there. If you change the content, you change this identifier because again, it's taking the. Uh, it's using the hash, uh, or, or sorry, it's hashing the file contents to get the identifier for the blob. So what will happen is you'll get a new blob when you stage the modification. And I think, and we can, we can check this out, the existing blob that was staged here is now uh, what, what Git refers to as dangling. It's no, it's no longer- The original blob? The original one, yeah. Is dangling. Is, is dangling. It, that may, we'll look at that. Let's, let's hold off on that uh, for now. Um, so let's go back to the example where we just had one modification, we did a git add, uh, we got a blob and it's been put in the staging area for Git. To prepare it, to prepare the blob to be committed, uh, we, take, we um, need to create a tree. Git calls this thing a tree. A tree is another object. The things in orange are all objects, except for this one which is poorly colored. Uh, so all of these guys here are objects, and all objects are identified by that hash and are immutable. When we create a tree, a tree is a snapshot of all the files that are in this particular tree that have been that are in that tree, right? So if I add hello.txt and put it to the staging area, I get a tree file. I'll put that here, I guess, or wherever the other ones are. And remove that for now. Yeah, I'll remove this. Is that entirely different from the working tree? Yes. Maybe poorly named, but yeah, working tree is different from the tree object. <laughs> the tree object points to all of the things, all of the files that have changed in there, in that tree, um, by their directory and file name. So you'll, inside the tree object, you'll see a pointer to that blob. So if I, if I change, if I made a hello.txt, uh, uh, example.txt, test.txt, whatever, and added those all into staging, my tree, um, I, I, can, I can create a tree that refers to all three of those objects to be committed. So the process is you have blobs, you create a tree that assembles all those blobs into something to commit, and then you turn that tree into a commit. 
or you commit uh, commit that tree. Original tree that you mentioned doesn't include the path to yes. include path to the files. Yes. yes, it does. So in the tree, we'll take a look at it. In the tree, we'll see um, we'll see D three. If we if we sort of decode it, we'll see D three four three eight as a blob. Hello dot text. And that will be uh, that will be the uh, tree referencing the blob in the git staging area. Does that make sense? So just to to review, you, you have a blob, then the tree assembles the blob into something to commit, yeah. and then you commit the tree when you make the commit command. Correct. And you can look at the tree like it's a snapshot of your changes you want to commit. So hello.txt is the only thing we have uh, in this tree. But if you change hello.txt and you change file.txt in a subdirectory or something, then um, that can be in there as well with you know subdirectory slash file.txt. It'll all be inside of that tree with you know a different identifier here. Um, so the identifier is just like a Subdirectory? Is that what you're the, the identifier identifies the blob, right? So oh, this I is, see. Again, so this is that. This is a line command. Right. Identifier space, and then the path. Yeah, this is what would be inside of the tree. If you looked at the tree, you would oh, see, see it's pointing to two blobs, and the blobs' file names are hello.txt and file.txt under the directory. <laughs> so, within your uh, working tree. Now, would that just be a text file that you could open up, or open yes. it in like? Yeah, you can. Well, uh, what's the what would the extension on that file be? You can anything you want. Doesn't have to have extension. Doesn't have an extension. Okay. And what, what's its Depends name? Depends on your OS, probably. Is it named after the hash? Uh, it's named whatever you want, because this is again, this is going to be a file that you created okay. that you want to track in your history, right? Well, so I'm thinking about the tree, I wonder what the tree file is named, where you can open the oh, file and look at. Yeah, the tree file. So we'll take a look at it. The tree file is is named. Uh, the file itself is going to be this the 40, 40 character, character thing, thing existing under the objects directory, and we'll get in to see what that looks like okay. when I jump to the console. Um, so when you have all of your blobs in the staging area. Uh, which is a separate spot in Git, and we'll take a look at that, uh, a separate sort of temporary area. Uh, you then create the tree from all the things in your stage, and you create the tree by uh, the command git write tree. You probably never use that command because it's, again, plumbing, right? You may have used, you definitely used that when you ran git commit. Because uh, at that point, it will write the tree. When you write a tree, you get back one of these guys that identifies the trees, uh, the tree, sorry, for, your, for all the blobs in your staging area. You get back an identifier that identifies the tree, and you'll have hello.txt in there. Then you need to commit that tree, right? Because the tree has all the files that have changed. Now you need to commit it and provide sort of a human readable message, useful message pertaining to what that commit is, what you actually did here. And when you create the commit, you need a tree, and you need a message. And you, you definitely need a message. Um, no more stuff. Uh, so, I'll just put it right here. So when you make a commit, you need a message and the tree. And the commit will reference the tree It'll have a message. It'll have the author and committer of the um, of the commit. Author and committer are different things. They're generally the same if you're working on the project. But the author is the person who made the change. The committer is someone committing the change on behalf of the author. Uh, they can be separate things. Um, when you say message, it's like a, a message someone wrote. Like, yes. Uh, this is to fix a bug. Right. The message. Yeah. Yeah. Your commit message. Yeah. Um, like updated the file. <laughs> like generally, you want it to be so yeah. Git has ASDMG. A, yeah. <laughs> Side note to the Git thing is what they like to do is have a summary and paragraph. So your first line is capped at 50 chars, I think. Am I 
might be wrong on that. But summary followed by a blank line, followed by more descriptive text here, which goes to 80 characters, I believe. That, 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 that's a convention on etiquette? That, uh, so. That's not that great. It's hard coded. Yeah. It doesn't force it, though if you use an editor that allows you, like, uh, so if you use Vim, which gives you some control, yeah. it'll do some syntax stuff for you to know that you've reached the end of your 50 character limit. Oh, things like that, um, which is which is pretty nice. Always good to write something useful here. I can't imagine the limit is 80 characters. I feel like a lot of people have like humongous commit messages on the paragraph below. Yeah, I uh, think yeah, it's a 80 80 characters was back when uh, oh, okay. everybody had you know that everybody was like what do you call like uh, oh do you mean uh, like T each line is 80 characters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, no, no, no. The whole text block. Yeah, no, each line is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I've written my own happy rest. Yeah. But the nice thing is, like, if you look at, as a side note, if you look at GitHub at all, and you're looking at some of the commits there, if things go past 50 characters, you need to kind of hit that dot, dot, dot to kind of get the rest of it to see, right? So follow the conventions, and it'll say to you maybe. Less keystrokes, less mouse movement. Yeah, it does that automatically. It has like a label, and then it'll split into like a text, like a multi line text yeah. box with the overflow. Yeah, and that's yeah. the summary versus description or detail section. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you add the commit message, the very detailed commit message to help your fellow developers, uh, and you take the tree, you get a commit object that goes into the objects database. <coughs> and now you have. Uh, a full-fledged commit in your history um, that you can refer to, you can look at and see that there's a tree, uh, the tree has blobs, the, commit, the author and committer, and the, um, and the commit message, uh, all inside that object's database. So again, the object's database, this directory, has um, blobs, which are in the binary files, trees, which are <coughs> the files you want to uh, groups of files that are one logical chunk that you want to commit, and the commit, which is that tree plus the message that conveys why you made those changes. When you make a commit to your Git repository, you're, you're committing to, in Git, they call it the default branch. There's a convention, which is a, actually it's a configuration in Git, that the default branch is called master. Um, and under refs, when you start out, you'll have something called heads, master. You also have something called tags. That will be empty now. Um, heads master uh, doesn't have anything in it, or actually doesn't exist initially. Only when you make a commit since Git knows you're on your active branch, this branch of development, right? If you think of, of development as a tree. Doug, you have changes, I have changes. I add your remote repository to mine. I get a, uh, I get a remote slash Doug in here, if I call it that. And Doug's master is gonna be at maybe the same thing. It's gonna be at maybe a different <coughs> commit. Um, so there's an idea of Remote repositories when you're working with others and you're working with places like GitHub. Uh, other questions on those things. So, I know that Git stores changes only. If I change a file, I have a, a, thou, a megabyte text file, and I make one line change to it, it only saves the change. Oh, changes? No, 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 no. It stores the whole thing. Stores the whole thing. Stores the whole thing. But it, maybe it's the whole thing at one point, but... Uh, in, in here, in the objects, these blobs yeah. are the full content of the files. It computes changes uh, when you ask for differences. What are the differences? It'll give you a what's called a unified diff. So if I have a thousand line file and I made a thousand one line commits to it. Yeah. Um, each commit is a different object? Each commit is a different object. And will it store a thousand blobs? Uh, you did a thousand, a thousand, thousand. The, the file is a thousand lines. 
Uh, no, it's, no it, it's it's just the uh, it's just each each time you added it to the staging and committed it. Yeah, you have that one blob at that point. This is what it looked like. Okay. Okay. Number two, you get the second blob. This is what it looked like, and you'll have a thousand of those. Okay. Because you made a thousand line changes in each commit at each staging and commit. Um, you'll have a thousand at that file size, right? Stored in, in binary. Um, so people say, don't use Git for binary files if you're trying to store a lot of binary files. And because it stores the full binary files in there. But text files, it doesn't want to store just the bits itself. No. Nope. It, doesn't. It, would be, it would be slow if you think about it. Because if you have a repository with a million commits to it, and I pulled it down, I need to replay every one million commits. Take one trip. Yeah. In order, and expect nothing to go wrong. Yeah. So by so storing it there, it, se it seems inefficient. There's, got, there's probably some other stuff going on that, but if you have a million mm -hmm. commits, what'll take forever is pulling it down. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so a repository is huge. That's why, what is the, how do you pull down? Shallow, it's a shallow copy. It only, it really only grabs like yeah a certain amount of like the last X in history. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's inefficient. When when you pull down that really million helps. something with a million commits in there or something like that, um, it does smart things for transport. It it packs things. You might have seen that if you go to GitHub, it'll be like compressing objects, and what you get are all of those objects end up being in something called like pack files in here, and all of a sudden you don't have anything. With that, uh, with that commit, or sorry, with the uh, with the blob identifier, they're all in these compressed files, um, and it should be transparent to you because the commands can handle things in pack files. But <clears throat> objects can be in two states here; they can either be in a pack, which you'll have to unpack, uh, so these are compressed, or they'll be as plain plain files. Um, so you might see that state if you pull down or you've done an initial clone maybe of a repository. And you'll see only pack files. Uh, but that's sort of, that's the first commit. There's a lot to the first commit. Uh, when you look at it. Um, <laughs> so any more questions before I jump into? Yeah, I have one. Um, you know, you mentioned about the remotes, and you know, both have the master branch. Wouldn't Doug rather create a feature branch for what he's working on, and and then merge that branch rather than having two people work on the master branch? Possibly. Um, this was this was from my repository. So if I'm tracking, yeah, uh, I might I might say th there there's there's two concepts. There is there's a, a remote, which is where his repository is, and there's the references that he has, his branches and his um, tags. So when I fetch Doug's remote. I'll get all of his references. I'll get his master branch, his possible feature branch. So if he didn't do like a git pull or something, like then it is because he is. Is that what you mean? Um, That's why I go. It's only when you go and pull his well, take, I guess his changes in um, that you will notice that effect. Uh, and git will try to prevent you from doing things that will put you in that state. Um, if he uh, or you'll get a merge. <coughs> if you're on master and Doug has a feature branch and you want to pull in his feature branch to your master, a pull is uh, porcelain, right? Pull is, we, I was talking to John about this, a pull is very deadly because you just, I'm going to pull out all these changes in. But a pull is a combination of fetch and merge. And merge is the problem, right? Fetch is go out to the remote, go out to Doug, pull in all of his changes into here, right? So you have what Doug was talking about in uh, the uh, his feature branch when you go and do a fetch. So you can say git fetch Doug slash topic one or feature one or something. And uh, you'll get refs updated with refs Doug feature one, and you'll get objects in here that pertain to what Doug was working on. Maybe commits that, or logs and commits that I don't have that were brought in from Doug's uh, feature branch. It's only when you merge do you affect this, your working tree. 
and then all of a sudden you might get into a problem because you uh, you're merging in code that uh, maybe he diverged from your branch, or you made files in your master that he's affect, affected in your in his topic. And if it merges cleanly, it will say, "All right, you're fine. Merge commit. Here's your message for the merge." If we've affected similar mm -hmm. lines in files, then you'll get a conflict in Git, and it will tell you you're conflicted. Um, you can say to Git, "What's the uh, what are the conflicted files?" And then you'll get your traditional. I'm sure you've seen the traditional. Uh, open up the file that has conflicts, and you'll see the old patch. <laughs> what are these crazy it's head? Yeah, it's his head. Yeah, you, know, you got all that stuff. <coughs> and then you have to resolve your conflict there. Um, once you do that, you're able to uh, create that merge commit. That merge is Doug feature one with my master code. Um, so the, so the key to um, fetch. So fetch updates your database. Yes. It's completely safe, given the fact that things are immutable. Because <coughs> even if your remote is out of date, all the fetch is going to do is say, is there anything else? Let me grab those objects. Yeah. And because things are immutable, then you can't, there's nothing, there's no, those don't harm no foul, no matter when you update it. Yeah. So. And you'll, and you'll, and you'll update your remote reference to Doug's feature branch. Right. Yeah. Uh, actually, all, it depends on how you do it, but if you fetch all of Doug's remotes, you'll get all of Doug's remote references <coughs> here, branches and types. Right. <coughs> so I, I've got a habit of doing fetch and merge manually, just so that I can separate the two. Yeah. One is a safe operation, fetch, just give you anything. Yeah. Merge, I'm, I'm more diligent and more prepared to to um, fix any issues. Yeah, and the common, and, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because you might say, well, let me just look for the differences between me and Doug's feature one. Yeah. So I'll do git diff, you know, there's an odd syntax there that I won't get right, but it'll be like git diff feature one, or Doug feature one dot dot master. And what that will do is compare what you know about Doug's feature one with your master reference, your commits. but. If Doug's changed in a remote repository, you haven't yet fetched it. Right. So you have Doug's old, potentially old. You're behind the head. You're, you're behind Doug's head for the topic. There's a lot more scribbling here than I wanted to. <laughs> 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 uh, you have to raise all that to show the Yeah, good, good point. Uh, any more questions? Or I jump into the. I was just gonna say, like, if you're behind the head, that's why it forces you. You have to pull so that it has the actual blobs, and it can, you know, deserialize that or whatever. So it can do that. It, it'll know if there are merge conflicts. You have to pull yeah. before you, you know, you can push your commit if you're behind the head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to push your changes and you're behind head, yeah. it will not let let you unless you force it. Yeah. And you don't want to force. It. And then there's the concept of rebasing, and that's another. Other uh, meetup, uh, but rebasing actually is a really cool would be a really cool visual uh, process to go. All right, cool. So I will. Uh, so while you're racing, I have a, a simple question. Yeah. So open source projects are they typically stored on GitHub? Like you can see the actual code for like Firefox, for example, or the latest Linux. Yeah. That's on GitHub. Um, not always, as, as uh, people, you can run your own servers and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of times you'll see big open source projects mirroring their, they mirror their stuff on GitHub. on GitHub. Okay, um, and that, then, is that to invite people to work on it, or just to see it, to, to look at it, to study it? Uh, could be both. Right. They, they yeah. could say, you know, our issue tracker is not on GitHub, and don't commit changes to GitHub. We won't take pull requests, blah, blah, blah. And some will, I think, do both. Some will say, I'll take pull requests for the people that want to use GitHub. I guess it depends on the project. GitHub is one of probably hundreds of yeah. open of code repositories. Okay. That's by far the most popular. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there are all sorts of different repositories. At this point, most of them are Git-based. But there are ones that are serial based, subversion based. Okay. 
We can uh, we do uh, lose a lot of press because it's very popular. Google Code's going out of business, or they shut down, I think now, or whatever, because yeah. GitHub is so popular. Right. Mm -hmm. And they and Google was already using GitHub, so they didn't really eat their own dog food, as it were. <laughs> Um, and, and as I'm doing this, maybe it might be helpful. Uh, Git, you know, for the his, historian or whatever, Git was created um, in 2005, so over 10 years ago, uh, by the Linux kernel developers, uh, chiefly, I think, Linus Torvalds, who created Linux. Uh, out of a need for, and it's always, you know, always born out of a need um, to have a open source system. Um, that they could use that could support Linux kernel development, which has a many number of contributors uh, built in like a tree fashion. Um, and they, uh, the other, the other system they were using at the time was proprietary. And because of reverse engineering efforts done by some one person within the uh, Linux community. The, P, the proprietary uh, version control system revoked their license, forcing the kernel developers to have to create a um, version control system. Hmm, that's interesting. So, but just that kind of that one need sparked ten years of you know productivity and progress for version control systems. Proprietary by who? Uh, the company was Bitmover. The product was Bitkeeper. And it was it was like fast. It did everything that the curl, Linux kernel development people needed it to do. Um, and uh, when they couldn't use it anymore, <coughs> they, built, they built that. Talk about a bad business decision. Huh? Talk about a bad business decision. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, oh, you tried to reverse engineer it. Well, we're going to take your license away. And then clearly nobody uses it anymore. <laughs> so okay. there you go. Uh, so let's. Let's kind of do the same thing we did in the, the visual here, and uh, let's make what do we call it? Hackers project. So is spikes? Is this? A, this is just my direction. I mean. So is this a Git server that you're running? No, this is my my laptop here. Just the home. Yeah. Just the director. The interesting. So the Git, um, you can you can create your whole project and manage your whole history on your machine, only when you choose to then send it somewhere else on the internet, and you can go and do that. But you manage everything on your Git repository locally. Okay. So here I just have, I create a project directory, and I'll call it hackers brj. I don't have anything in here, right? So we start off by doing git and git, and that actually just creates you an empty Git repository. Sorry for the large font, it makes for a better visual. And I have this .git directory here. So if we look at the .git directory using the tree command, showing you a handy tree, you'll see, you'll see a number of things in here. If you want to get more into like the other things that are here, then we can. But the, uh, the head is what we saw before. And I'll just open that up real quick. So this is that head file, and it's just a plain text file that says the reference is heads master, and this is what's considered the active branch. So that points to a file called refs head master, which I don't believe exists. So it doesn't exist because we have not made that commitment. <coughs> if we look more into the objects uh, database, that's this subdirectory here. We won't have anything in there as well uh, besides info and pack. Uh, pack, I mentioned that's where like compressed packed objects go when you go and fetch them from other places. Uh, you can also pack things locally if you choose to, but it's plumbing commands that you probably won't use. And then for the refs, we have heads, which will be the head of your branches you can you have, and tags, which are the named names for commits in your history. 
so let's start by creating that hello.txt file. And let's cheap way to do it would be the status command. Let's ask git what's the uh oh hold on. Uh, I don't have any commits yet. It looked like I had a commit. Git status. Okay, so git status says, hey, we're on the active branch called master. Initial commit. I guess because it's your first time, it's reporting that it's an initial commit. You have untracked files. These are things that Git doesn't know about. And it doesn't know about the file we just created, hello.txt. It doesn't, it doesn't track it in its history. Untracked meaning it hasn't been staged? Untracked meaning it hasn't been staged, and it hasn't, yeah, it hasn't been staged, exactly. Yep. So I'll say hello hackers, or hello hackers, <laughs> right? Am I right? Yeah. Uh, as as I mentioned, that a quick plug to the to the show, Mr. Robot. If you don't watch it, watch it. If you ever if you ever watch the movie from 1995 called Hackers, you'll like this uh, this show on the U.S. Mm -hmm. movie. Sorry. Uh, so if you look at hello.txt, it contains our uh, our content. Again, git status uh, has untracked hello.txt. Now we need to update our staging. Now here's a case uh, about the um, synonyms. We're talking about working tree, working directory. It says, if you scroll to the right, it'll say working directory. Does it? Yeah. To included in working in directory. Included in. Oh wow. I'm just so used to just seeing that. That's why. I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. There is. A, yeah. But well, there are definitely systems here. Yeah. So it's it is called a working tree. I'm just so used to it because yeah. uh, on the right it says to include in working tree in working directory. Directory. Okay. It's just a synonym. So Sorry. I right uh, no. I know what it says. Oh. Okay. Because I thought it was done. Yeah. You know, it, he'd have to make it bigger. Then it's what will be going to that side. To include in what will be committed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're synonyms. Or they're just, they're, they're they're yeah. Because yeah. 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 you haven't committed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, you're right, Richard. You said I moved it to uh, uh, the staging area. Now, in the commands, you'll see staging, index, and cache. Those three are the same thing, I'm pretty sure, from what I said when I've read in the documentation. Uh, they were called something at some point in time, and, and they're called different things all over, the, all over the map. If I do the plumbing command, update in there, and say hello.txt, it will complain to me, because it's, uh, it's not tracked, so I can't update, I can't add the modification, right? It's not tracked. It's actually a new file. So I need to add the add command. Now you might use the add command to do this, and the add will, will do that and more. Um, this will update the, uh, yes, I did mean two dashes. Should be yes. Um, and this will update the staging area. If I run get status again, <coughs> we'll see the green there is it changes to be committed otherwise known as the cache, or staging, or index, uh, then, um, <coughs> then this is now the staging area. So Tony, yeah. you have a blob now. Yes, I'm going to get into it now. Okay. Right. Yeah, awesome. All right. uh, yeah, so there's this thing called Git, right? Looked at that. And in the objects, let's look at what we have now. There it is. There is that 40 character thing. So here, the uh, three two is the first two <laughs> bytes, or first two characters of that 40 character string. So they bucket, uh, I think for, for uh, um, disambiguating the file names, they bucket the first two characters in a subdirectory. Uh, don't know if it gets any more nested than that, uh, but it may. Uh, so, so, so if you look at this, that blob that we created 
um, for hello.txt. It's 32322DA blah blah blah. And we can uh, use a plumbing command called git cat file dash t, which tells us the type 32, and it's a blob. So we then say cat file, it's a blob, and it gives us the content of that blob. Thank you. Oh. Oh, so the SHA is 3232. Two, two, two. Yeah, the SHA is it's, it's the first two characters are, is, is that directory there? And I think it's for file name uh, collision problems, is my theory. So you meant to do that, 32? Yes, three, two. yes. I concatenated this guy with the 32. Yep. Okay. Yeah, cool. So it's not a file path. That's just coincidental? No. No, oh, that is the first, two. always the first two characters are uh, created in a directory under objects. So we'll, we'll, I'll show okay. you the tree and the commit. They'll likely be different hashes and likely have a different directory that it's under. And again, those are the first two characters of the hash. All right. and that was SHA-1 SHA so, okay. is a, uh, I think it's called a checksum type of thing. What it basically does is it gives you, uh, given the same file contents, it computes you a small representation that only that content will uh, map to. No, I think there's probably collisions. It could be collisions that could right. happen. Like, hello. So basically, what happened is they they computed a SHA one uh, a SHA one checksum, which is SHA one sum or something. SHA SHA one sum of hello dot text. Okay, so it's different. So again, there's more to the blob, right? We'll look at the blob, but there is the there is the file permissions, there's the content, and there's the file name. So you know, maybe you need a little bit more to, to get the same uh, shot as what's here. Effectively, it's like being able to name anything, any content, being able to find a unique name for it. Can you, if there was something with the exact same content, you'd have the exact same name. Yeah. Uh, but that's all it is, just a way to, to generate a name or something. And it's generally the way <coughs> passwords are stored in a database for any, any, any good system. Or rather, a way passwords are checked. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and store. You store the checksum. Well, you store the checksum, but the yeah. idea is that you never store the password. Yes. So yeah. if the password database was stolen, they don't have your password. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. They have your name. But when you go and say, my password is foo, yes. it's going to create the hash for foo. Compared to the hash it knows, they equal. So your password is likely is correct. Yeah. Can you run it once again? What's that? Can you run the last command once again? The shower? Yes. Yeah, it shouldn't change. Okay. And I think the 32, 32 is a coincidence. No. Because I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what you said. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. a coincidence there. Yeah, because mine is different. So yeah. if, if you have another file and it starts with 32, it will go under the same directory? Yes. Yep. So let's see where we are again. Get status is a good thing. Uh, we still have hello.txt as a blob in the staging area. Now we need to create a tree, right? Because a tree is the thing that we use to, to group all of our files and blobs in the same commit. So let's do that. The command for that is git write tree. And again, plumbing command. You would do git commit. Git commit would, would, uh, would do the write tree. Uh, as well as the uh, commit tree command. Get right tree will create uh, a tree object in the git directory. And so